It's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and let's talk about this case. What's going on here? I see a lot of things going on here, and I love to post this kind of cases where I'm just like, whoa, this is kind of a train wreck. What are they doing? So, um, and this is not my case, so that's part of the fun. So first of all, what do I see wrong with this case? And the title of this video is actually, when should you do bracket repos? but I kind of wanted to go off on a tangent a little bit here now that I'm looking at this case more. So let's talk a little bit about sequence of appointments. And if you've worked with me one-on-one -on -one in some of our orthodontic consulting sessions with Straight Smile Solutions, we do help doctors one-on-one -on -one with their cases. Um, first thing, lots sometimes we have to take a step back and be like, whoa, wait, we got some bad habits here. Let's, let's break the bad habits. And you know, not all orthodontists are taught this way. This is the way when we're in residency, we have a lot of professors and, and faculty that we work with. Some are good, some are bad. Some have really great methods and you eventually pick up on those doctors that those mentors that have really systematic habits and you learn how to do things in a very efficient, systematic way. If you do not have a systematic way of doing your ortho, it's gonna be a train wreck. You're gonna be all over the place and the case is gonna take four, five, six more times than it really needs to, but you have to kind of stay the course, okay? So what do I see here? First of all, there is just some cattywonka crazy brackets here. The bracketing is way all over the place. It is wrong, 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 wrong brackets. So this is why I just wanted to discuss the whole IDB versus direct bonding thing. IDB, indirect bonding, DB, direct bonding. If you want to know more about IDB, indirect bonding, the benefits, how it works, you should definitely watch all my videos on IDB. I also have webinars archived on IDB. If you want to know about DB, direct bonding, how to brace brackets, place brackets correctly, you should watch all my videos on DB, okay? Bracket placement. If you want to watch those videos, we've got them. A couple different ways you can get there. You can go to our um, YouTube site, which is Straight Smile Solutions YouTube site, not your YouTube site, our YouTube site. Go into your YouTube site, put in Straight Smile Solutions. It's going to take you to our YouTube site with the green banner. From there, there's a small magnifying glass towards the right side. You can put in any keyword like IDB, DB, bracket positioning, all of our content will come up and we've got tons of content. You do not even have to take a class on ortho because everything you need to know is in our videos and they're totally free. Why do we do this? I don't know, we're crazy. So um, I just enjoy making them and I wanna leave a legacy of good ortho out there for doctors. So that's why I make them at no cost and make them available to you. So anyways, one of the things we talk about is keeping things you know, in a system, keeping things down a certain path. And this is what we were taught in residency. First stage of any type of braces case is going to be a line and level. That's all you do. You do not get to close, close space. You do not get to fix bites. All you do is fix midlines. No, 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 no. You can't do that yet. You have to do things in a certain order or it's going to turn into a mess. Align and level. The key to aligning and leveling is the brackets have to go on perfectly, hence the whole IDB versus DB. Clearly, this doctor did not know how to put brackets on correctly. So, and don't get me wrong, I am not perfect at putting brackets on. Sometimes my brackets move, they slip. Sometimes you have like a really juicy patient. Sometimes when the doctor, when the assistant goes into light care, they tap them or bump them and they move. There's a lot of things that can happen. Okay. So, so have I had brackets like this? Absolutely. Now, Normally the way I teach in my classes, um, and just to clarify you guys, sometimes I do have classes if I'm sponsored to come teach a class. Do I do my own anymore? Not so much. It's just too much work and too much money. So I prefer to do things more remotely, more one-on-one, -on -one, and I teach you on your own cases. That's how we teach now. Um, but we're always open for teaching classes. If someone would like to sponsor or host them, you know, deal with it, market for it, I'll come and teach it. That's not a problem. But anyways, I just wanted to clarify that. But what we teach you, is that brackets have to be put on first correctly, perfectly to begin with, or this is not gonna work out, right? Then you're gonna go ahead and work up your wire sequence to 18 nitai. Once you're in 18 nitai and your wire is passive, not deflected, but passive, you're gonna do a full reevaluation at that stage before you move on, before you close any space, no space, not even a small diastema. I know this is really different and counter indicative to what is often taught in a lot of classes, but there's a reason for this, okay? So you take a progress pano and then you do your repose. You stay in that wire, the 18 night tie, again, until you're sure it's perfect. Once it's perfect, then you can move up to your heavier, more rectangular wires, and then you can start closing spaces, moving midlines and fixing bites, okay? So we're still in the first stage, align and level. Second stage is space closure and then AP changes. So 
you can see here that these brackets are nuts. I mean, obviously I'd have to have a progress panel in order to be sure, and I'd have to have a lot more photos than just this. Photos on the side, upper and lower photos, a lot of photos to check bracket positioning. But just, just based on this front shot, obviously eight and nine are not correct. Which one is right, which one is wrong? I don't know, because I don't know if this is the patient's real bite. Assuming this is the patient's real bite and there's no bite bumps on it, we've got vertical issues. So then I'd probably re-bracket this one a little bit gingival um, to help make it look more like this. Also, you should be mirroring your brackets. So seven should look like 10, assuming they're the same size tooth. Um, so they're not right either, right? Um, what about on the bottom? Well, these are just nuts. I don't even know that any of these are right. Probably my favorite one is probably this one. And from there, we will build, we'll find the one we like, and we will build the other ones around it. However, we have an open bite here. So sometimes I like to put my brackets a little bit lower, but they're already crazy low. So I don't think I can go any lower than that with an anterior open bite. But yeah, I mean, clearly this one needs to go counterclockwise. And mesial, this one needs to go counter counterclockwise. And this one, I don't really know. I can't really tell from this angle. Probably a little bit incisal and maybe a little bit distal. Not sure. Anyways, but you got to level up. These incisal edges should all be the same height and should be nice and straight, assuming there's no wear. Okay. But anyways, that's what I had to tell you. Keep on the, keep on the trajectory. Keep on the sequence of steps. Don't skip steps. Get your brackets on perfectly. Don't move into heavier wires until you get the brackets right to begin with. If you do things in a certain sequence, your cases will. And use IDB. Your cases will work out. All right. Thank you.